entirety. And this is pretty close to spawn here. Whoa, careful, careful. Hello everyone, Thranx is here, and welcome back to the Minecraft Fan Realm from the Thranxian Discord server. This is the second season where we set up in the jungle. It's been a little bit since we did our episode one, and I had some questions in the comments. Hey, when is this coming back? Uh, let it be known, this is being played extensively. Um, it's just not producing a lot of videos, and while I was hoping to have the time to get some nice and organized videos, um, that just hasn't been happening. So instead, what we're opting for this time around is we're really, we're just going to look at what's changed and some of the things that have been built, and talk a little bit about what we're doing moving forward, and hopefully just get the ball rolling on some of these videos coming out. Now, I think, so it's been a while since I've been here. Let's see, I brought you some fishing rods, the shadow cat. Yeah, exactly. So during a battle at Blue Rose's village, um, sadly it was off camera, I died. Um, trying to keep the pillagers and illagers out, uh, Blue Rose was ultimately victorious and did become the hero of the village. However, however, it was at great, at great cost as I perished and... After I perished, I was uh, I lost my fishing rod, and it was a really nice one. So Shadow Cat was lucky enough to to bring me a near perfect one, which I then then made into a perfect one. Okay, so this is probably an area that looks somewhat familiar here. This is this is spawn. Spawn is actually right here, I believe. This is this is the actual no kidding spawn point. Boop. So right over here you have the map. You can see the map has expanded quite a bit. There's a lot of landlocked down here. This interesting biome, I believe this is the, oh, what, the uh, the Megataiga? Megataiga, maybe? And then, of course, we got some mountains over there, this massive desert, and that I believe that's Blue Rose's location there. I think that's uh, Area 51. That's where Justin is set up. I'm not sure. I could be mistaken. And, of course, this is Spawn, and uh, what I need to do, actually, is I need to grab my... I need to grab a copy of this map and hang it on the wall because we're located actually at this island here. This little island chain is pretty neat, and I set up right there. Um, we're going to go do that. Uh, there sure, certainly is a lot to explore, and I have not been the only one doing these maps this time, so credit where it is due to those doing the map. I believe it was uh, Blue Rose and Justin for sure. Um, I'm not sure if it was other people. Uh, Railway to Mr. Propellant's Jungle Ruined Village, Village Under Construction. Oh, I am so tempted to see where this is going to go. Okay, I, I think we kind of have to do it. I didn't really get permission first, but I think it'll be okay because there's a railway and a sign right here in spawn. I just don't want to hurt the panda bear. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, stop it. Oh, how could you? The panda says, how could you? Oh, I'm trying so hard. Ooh, oh. Well, that panda is not happy with me. Well, that's how that goes, I guess. One day you're a nice fluffy panda, and then the next minute you're zipping down the railway. Wow, look at all this powered rail. Somebody had an awful lot of gold. A nice little stone bridge. Okay, I should have brought a map just to keep everything oriented, but we are indeed heading southbound at this time. This is the uh, treetop village. It's being run by my wife, Baby Sparrows. And let's see. Over here, the path does continue south. Now to the south, I'm pretty sure this was the direction of, yes, the old road that was built. There's a ravine over there with a slime chunk. And let's see. This road should go to the outpost by the river, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, but I've not been on this railway, so... Ooh, it cuts right through the trees. Look at that. Okay, so it's a little... Not what I thought it was where it was going to take me. Interesting. Okay. 
Okay. Ooh. And there's an iron golem pinned up. Okay. Wow, interesting. Oh, oh, I have been here. I have. Yes, this connects in a variety of ways, actually. Um, but it has expanded since I've been here. Holy moly. That's that's quite a tree. Hmm. Wow. Well, let's see. I'll, uh, I'll look, we'll look around a little bit, um, but not too much, because we haven't been invited. But I think this is the visitor center here, perhaps. Maybe not. Oh, there is another portal over here. I like it. Sort of like these, these, uh, these ruins, this courtyard, and these ruins here in the jungle. This is. This is nice. I am a fan of this. The bird making creeper noises is putting me off a little bit. And I believe there's... There's more to this, is there not? Ooh, making zombie sounds. More iron golems. Interesting. Oh, and there's... Some llamas for village trading. Yeah, so this pathway here actually connects to this side of the treetop village here. Okay. Excellent. So then from here, um, here I think we're just gonna cut through. We won't do the whole tour yet, because again we haven't we have to we have to pre-coordinate these things, um, but we're just gonna cut through to get to the other side here. There's quite a bit going on here. Um, but we're just we're taking the, the slapdash tour. The fast, fast tour. I believe some of these gates are control points and such. I'm not certain. Oh, look, and here we go. Here is the ravine. Now, as I understand it, this ravine was actually designated to be a slime chunk, almost in its entirety. And this is pretty close to spawn here. Whoa, careful, careful. Yep. In fact, finding slimes down here is very, very common. And let's do a little bit of exploring. Abandoned base. Oh, what is this? Boy, abandoned indeed. Um, oh, wait, maybe there's... Hold on. Mm, maybe not. It doesn't look like there's much back here. Bedrock and iron. Uh, I'll take the iron, sure. What an, what an odd little sign. Oh, look! Zombie villager. That's fun. Another slime. Go ahead and get that. Hmm. And here, I could have sworn that this was breached into by a cave somewhere. Oh. That's right. Okay, now if I'm not mistaken, this actually cuts all the way back to the mine underneath the grotto. So let's... Ooh, it is down. Nope, this is also an abandoned base? Oh, man. Somebody was really struggling with what they were going to use this base for over here. So this is pretty neat. I've heard a lot about this ravine on the Thranxian Discord channel. And I've also heard a lot about it in the Minecraft chat in the server. But I've not been over this way, so... Ooh, see, I don't know if I want to do all of that. Nope, the easier option might just be to swim out and walk the path back, because I'm not exactly sure where the road... Oh. Disregard my last. There it is. Oh, 
All right, so that was blocked up because this connects all the way back, I'm guessing. Right, remember, torch is on the right, at least for my system. Uh, torch is on the right means you're going deeper in. Torch is on the left means you're going back to start. Oh, yeah, look at this. Oh, interesting. What a mine. Wow, this is extensive. Oh, I think this is... I think this is actually under the grotto. Yep. Yeah, here we are. Okay, so we're back at spawn, pretty much. A neat little tour down there. We've got some stuff that's been enchanted... Uh, some of this stuff is interesting. I enchanted a sword with looting three, and yeah, it gave me fire aspect and bane of arthropods, and knockback two. Really, really just hmm, top notch stuff, right? So, and then of course we spend all our levels enchanting the embrace of Terra, which is really just one efficiency four book away, or an efficiency five book away from being a perfect. Fortune 3 pick, and then we got a Looting 3 sword, the Mazamoon, which is also perfect. Oh, look at that little garbage disposal. Look at that. Looting sword with sharpness 5 on breaking 3 and mending 1. Now, the mending books were obtained... Oh, you startled me. Were obtained from Area 51. There is some high-level alien technology going on over there. I don't necessarily know if I have the clearance to reveal it on the channel. Oh, the posse of pandas is back. They want revenge. They want revenge for their for their their family member that I that I slew. No, okay, we do have some of this technology here. Oh, free stuff. Not sure what all this construction is down this way. But then, of course, we have this looks like an automatic um, yeah an automatic grower. I think this is how this works. Hold on. All right there, you go. So it's like just a food replicator. Cool. And then let's see, back over here at spawn. Oh, yeah. We have our normal stuff, our little map, and the wheat, and our compost, which I guess is what we're going to do with those carrots. All right. And then from here, let's see. If you remember this little area. That used to just be a little campfire kind of at the top. So this is where the Hall of Banners is being constructed currently. Now we have the portal on top. There is a portal on top. Um, but for now, this area is sort of off limits. At least, I don't know. Some of its guts are. I don't want to trespass necessarily. This project has been entrusted to uh, the one and only Sparring Rooster. So, of course... His scale is quite large, and he's going to... I'm sure at some point there there is some internalness to it, but I don't um I don't I don't know what kind of stuff is going on in there, and so we're we're just gonna leave it be for now until we have a chance to get a nice handoff. But so what we're gonna have is the spawn portal at the top, and then of course there's gonna be you know areas for people to rest, maybe get supplies, and then I'm sure uh, the main focus is going to be a floor that is all of the banners for everyone on the server they're going to have their banner they're going to come here and hang it up and then put their name next to it um on a sign or maybe we'll have the sign and you just hang your banner next to it and then that way everybody's banner is like you know registered um so we're working on that really realistically what we should do is we should use up a little bit of these seeds here Maybe get some get some bone meal and thinking we rapidly grow some of this wheat so we can breed some of these cows. We can get some of these levels back because we we did use quite a bit of levels. Look at that. And then more. Oh, do we want more? I don't know. Bamboo, that's not really a food, is it? We have that pumpkin pie. What about the raw cod? No, it's got to be cooked, right? Of course it does. It's got to be edible. It's got to be ready to eat. 
I think we'll be good if we just harvest what we have here really quick. We just won't harvest all of it. We don't need a ton. There's not a lot of cows in in the breeding, in the little breeding trough, unfortunately. The industrial farm-like pit that we've got the cattle in, they're, they got harvested and, and then they weren't fed again. So their numbers are pretty low. So really we just need... We just need enough wheat to, to get their numbers back up to a nice, thriving population. Fortunately, we spent a good bit of time trying to get our area established and, uh, of course, set up with a turtle a turtle farm. In fact, what we actually established is kind of a little bit of a nature sanctuary, and we're going to go check that out here shortly. Oh, really what I need is to till some of this soil. This is so bad. None of this is organized. It's been a while since this has been tended. I can just tell. How about... Yeah, we'll just do the stone version for now. Look at all this. Look at all these rough patches. Rough hewn. There we go. And we'll just put this in the box, and then that way somebody will be able to maintain it in the future without having to make the tool. Perfect. I'm going to take that sand. No, I guess I'll take the fish. Yeah, why not? I'll take the fish. All right, let's go feed the poor cows trapped in this poor, poor, dark little little pit in the breeding area. They are born and, born and raised in captivity down here. They never really get to see the light of day kind of go through their whole life cycle down here. It's it's a little sad, but the worst thing is after they after they were harvested the last time, they weren't fed, so I'm sure they're incredibly hungry. Eh, well, they were fed. There's there's a couple babies. That was from it was actually me. Um, that's how I know they weren't fed, but we're going to take good care of them. We're going to tend spawn back up a little bit. And then, of course, we have some carrots and beetroot, which, yeah, not really what we need the most. From the, from the farmers I met and the merchants I met, what was in demand was pumpkins. Pumpkins are in high demand right now. And so really what we need is some form of, like, ability to churn out pumpkins. Watermelon will be right behind it, but for now, pumpkins are where it's at. So we're going to find a way to set up actually a, a large amount of pumpkins and hopefully to get them to sort of be automatically harvested. And it's not going to be anything cosmic, but I think I think we can do it fairly easily. So let's gather all of the things we're going to need. Um, I think we're going to need some stone and... See, I thought... Thought we had pistons here already, but perhaps not. They're easy enough to make, so we'll go ahead. We'll we'll melt this eight iron that we got because we are going to need that. And then, and we have the jungle logs. Okay, let's just start making them. I think to start. We have nine pumpkin seeds. Let's just do eight. Eight, we'll do that. Oh, that made way more than... Well, then, that's that's a lot of work. I don't know if we're going to do that. Let's, let's start with a, a smaller amount. And then we'll take the hoe. I think, at this point, we can easily drop that stuff out of our inventory. But we're also uh, we're also going to have to make a bucket. See, this isn't we're not going to have enough. Let's just look at what we got here. All right, to make the piston, what we're missing the redstone. Okay. Well, I know we have some of that. Look at that one block. Oh, maybe it's mining we need to do. Four pistons. I mean, that's better than nothing, right? Oh, the holdout was wood. We can go two more. One, two, 
One, two. That's all we need is eight. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. So now we have like no redstone. Well, you know what? We have a fortune pick. I know there's a place we can go down here to get some more. Even if just for a minute, and then we'll make our bucket. There's got to be some exposed reds. Out. Yeah, I was going to say. Exactly. Um, okay, I'll bite. Let's go down this hallway. It doesn't look like much has been done down here. Okay, it's cut across this way and that. Um, I see more redstone here. All right, I'll bite. Thirty-four. That's quite a bit for what we need. Mm, okay, I think this is probably going to be the bulk of it. So it'd be forty-three. I think that's going to be good. We'll run with that. And then what we'll do here is we'll make the bucket. Okay, perfect. And pistons. Oh, the seeds. Great. And the dirt. Okay. The big trick is going to be trying to automate this. Oh, you know what? We're so going to need a crystal to do this. Well, we can start to set it up. Or maybe, maybe what we really need to do oh, is take a trip into the nether just real quick for some crystal. Oh, man. All right, I guess we're doing it. Just need, just need a little drop of that nether quartz. Not a lot. No, no, not a lot. Just a little drop. All right. We're going to do it. Hopefully I don't regret it. No, I think it's relatively secure here. Yeah. Yeah, see, look, we've got a ice highway laid out to the coral reef due to Mr. Propellant. Thank you very much. That's actually a really neat little thing. And then what do we have over here? We have this other banner. And, whoa, yep, we're really high up, which was the point of building the portal all the way over here. And the big kicker is, oh, there's glowstone over there, too. No, no, no. Aside from all of that, that's all we need, right? It's just a little bit of quartz. So there's no reason to complicate it. Not with a bunch of stuff we don't need. Look at that. This way we stay on task. Wonderful. Now, we really only needed one, but because we had the fortune pick, I know we have way more than enough now. Just going to keep ourselves well fed here. There we go. And at this point... All right. All right, everything's kind of freaking out. I think we can feed the cattle again, maybe. So we should try to. I know there's still a lot of babies, but yep, the adults are hungry. And this is how you make it happen. Right here. Because once we get this place packed full and we take our looting three sword into here, then, then we're going to be pretty much set food and leather for quite some time. Alright, we fed them again. And the children grow up. Then, then things will really happen, but we, we'll run out of wheat before that happens if we don't get another good harvest in. Now I'm tempted to sort of retake this over, but this has stuff underneath it here. So when this was originally built, this was built as sort of this cocoa bean farm here. Underneath. A lot of storage, but I don't really... Oh, no, there is some stuff here. Oh, look, all these leaves and, and such. Hmm, okay, well. 
I think we'll leave this be. It wasn't ours. It was it was built in spawn, and it's it's a nice nice thing. I think we'll just leave it be for now. So we only have four iron now. Is the problem? Let's go. In fact, you know what? I I know. I know where we need to go. We need to borrow a little bit of iron from over here. Maybe even just a couple? A little bit? No. Not so much. Okay, well, getting more iron is a thing. But in the meantime, we can lay out our work area. So we'll take our water. Hmm. It's going to be relatively close by. If it gets too far away, it won't... It won't be loaded while while work is being done. Oh, perhaps it should just be laid out like right here. Okay, let's let's carve some of this back, some of this vegetation back here. A jungle is so oh, just oppressive. It's everywhere. Okay, now what I'm thinking is if we go... Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's put eight in this direction, right? I like that. All right, we get another bucket of water, and then what we'll do... I know I don't need the whole row of water, but I, I kind of like it that way. So we'll get we'll get a nice a nice little column of water laid out here. The next one should go about here, and then we'll have water right all over. And we we'll just need one here, and we have water. Okay, great. Now the tilled land would be sort of here, like this. And then we would plant our pumpkins just like that. Which means that the pumpkins will want to lay adjacent to these. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to sort of block this off and this off. So the only place the pumpkins can go is here. And then this is where we put our pistons down like this. Okay, so then what that means is, just like it looks, when these pistons activate, they will push the pumpkins over one square, breaking them, bloop, and pushing them over here. Now, the real question becomes, right, how do we get them up from this point? And, and the answer is with a hopper and a minecart. So we're going to have to dig down underneath this and run a hopper with a minecart back and forth over the top of this and then have that deposit into an array. And now what you can see is we, we, we don't have the iron for that. Um, so we're going to hold the phone on that for just a second. One of the things we can do actually though while we're here is to give us a little place to put our crafting table and we might just um, you know cut some of this down. This is a little bit in our way, and while I'm not using the oak wood at the moment, it is in our way. Okay. And we're going to have to go a little higher up. Oh, we still can't reach the top. Are you kidding me? Wow. It's a big tree, and no wonder it's in our way. Wow, okay, well, if we use dirt at this point, I won't feel bad about going up more. No, at this point, the principle is this tree is going down. I can't allow it to defeat us like this. Look at this thing. It's a majestic oak. It's been here for hundreds of years. It's safe in the jungle. Until I came along. 
deforestation. Oh, I know it's it's wrong, but oh, we need the lumber. What are we to do? I don't see any branches, any any trunk pieces. Oh, wait, wait, nope, I see one there. Yep, gotta chase them all or else it won't, it'll loiter, it'll, it'll linger. I don't want that. Oh, my. Oh, nope, there's another one. Look at that. See, you gotta be thorough. And there's another one. These are tricky. If you miss even one, then you'll have to come back up for it later. Normally, I just let the trees break on their own, but you can't afford to let one go by. That's probably good. One can hope, anyways. Nope, there's one right there. Look at that. Blast! And another one. In the corner. Oh, I see another one from here. Takes a little bit of work to bring these down. Oh, that one we can reach from here. Yep. All right. Now, where were we? Uh, let's make an observer. Right, that's where we were. Boom. With our lots and lots of ports, and then what we'll do is we'll sort of run the observer like this. See? Because then... Mm, no, that's the observational... Okay, well, we got it backwards. I want the red... The Right, the redstone runs this way. The observer runs the other way. Like that, and then really, we don't even... I don't even think we need a repeater or anything. This is really just such a basic little... Right, like that. So now, if anything changes this block here... Oh, uh, wait, no. You can't do this. Um, there's a reason you can't do this, because this block will forever break it in a loop, right? Yeah, see? Is the solution for that, I wonder. Because as soon as you observe a change in this block, the piston's gonna have to push the pumpkin. Hmm. That will bear a little bit of research. Um, in the meantime, um, plus I need to get more iron uh, for the hopper chest system that's going to run underneath it, and probably some rail, but I do have some rail. I just need to go gather it up. So, uh, while we're talking about that, let's go ahead and, well, since we've been showing off everything else at the spawn and doing some work, let's go show what I've been working on up to this point. Traveling a little bit at night. I always seem to make this trip at night. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's because I like to the serenade of traveling down the river in the jungle at night. All the various monsters and birds making monster sounds. Maybe not. So if you follow the river east-northeast out of spawn, then you'll find it's, it's pretty narrow. There's not a lot of clearance. And um, depending... On how many trips you've made, there can be an awful lot of drown in the river. As you can see here, there's, there's a good bit of good bit of enemies in the river there, and some up here. But if you keep going, eventually you will get to where it opens up to the right with a massive lake. And really, you don't want to go that way. You want to stick to the course of the river, where it's deep here. A little shallow little lake bed, that tide pool, we're going to leave that be. And when you see the jungle temple, you 
stay to the right. Stay to the right in the in the first major fork of the river, and then you see. Then what happens? Well, then you're gonna you're gonna come around this river again. Lots of drown down there. And you're going to come into this little uh, this little river delta, this floodplain here. And the river sort of ends. I mean, it winds down the coast there for a little bit, but eventually it ends. It's all part of this river delta. In, actu in actuality, if you look, it sort of cycles back around here and cuts into this area right before this sandbar, and then you hit deep ocean, deep cold ocean. So cold, in fact, that there's sort of a little bit of ice over here. We all kind of agree that this is too little ice to really do anything with. So we kind of just decided to leave it as a sanctuary. Besides, there's bigger, easier sections of ice that you can just camp out on for longer periods. Now, if you come out of the River Delta and you just kind of head north and hug the coast, you'll notice that some of the jungle there is bamboo jungle. See, that's how you know you are, in fact, heading in the right direction. But again... Stay mostly north. Due north, in fact. You'll notice the seabed starts to change to gravel and stays really, really deep. By about the time you notice that in the ravine, you should see my sanctuary. Not a large island, and definitely not much to boast about yet, but it is getting there slowly but surely. This island is a nature preserve for turtles and sheep and horses and really just all manner of animals and plants mostly bamboo so far and turtles actually a good bit of turtles the island itself rises very high out of the ocean floor and very steep so there are not a lot of drowned that we run into in fact you can even see there are some underwater caves we've yet to explore uh, but we have the area fairly well walled off and defended all around the entire island. And it's lit up fairly well. So you can see here we have our little ranger hut. It is still under construction. It is not done by any means. Frank says, Turtle Island, take off your boots before entering and enjoy the turtles. Thanks, Justin, for putting those signs up for me. Here you can see we were also looking at something similar with the pumpkins. Um, and then decided that we probably would not be here enough to make use out of it. But if you come down here, I don't know if we're going to keep the pig or not. You can see the turtles are really starting to expand. Oh, look at them all. Look at them all. They grow up so fast. So, so fast. In fact, I think it's time that we went down there and fed fed the ones that are ready to make more baby turtles. So let's go down there and do that. We'll give everybody a nice tour of the turtle pen. Careful, careful. We don't want to... Oh, oh, many of them have yet to lay their eggs. Oh my. Many of them already have eggs to be to be laid in the sand. We should leave them be. And let them do their let them do their thing. It's their evening. Look, we even have turtles over here, which they got up before the fence came up. I'm sorry, but this isn't an authorized egg laying area. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You understand. You understand, of course. Of course. Uh, that being said, I think this is a pretty good place to go ahead and call this particular episode. I do hope everybody enjoyed getting to see what we've been up to. Hopefully this will be the beginning of more Minecraft episodes from the Season 2 fan realm. And, uh, yeah, just remember it was your comments and your engagement that got me to pull this back up. Uh, but be, a, be assured, there is a lot of gameplay happening on the server, even if it is not always making it to the channel. So hopefully we'll try to do that a little more. And don't forget, you can also see the streams of when I'm playing and not recording on Mixer. If you ever want to see some of that Minecraft server gameplay when I'm perhaps being a little more casual and grinding, so you can see how I grind. That's about all I'm going to pitch right at the end. Take care.